Hey guys, it's Illuminostic safely back in Vilcabamba, Ecuador after um, being stuck on the coast for a while because of the protests. We didn't have very good internet and uh, I was dealing with a lot of chaos. So I know it's been a while since I put out a video. I want to apologize for that. And I also want to thank all you guys for helping us to reach a thousand subscribers and getting monetized. Um, that's helpful. There's been a lot of really exciting things that have happened for us. When we got stuck out on the coast, we had the opportunity to meet some people that own a really beautiful space in the jungle. Um, Ayampe is like a quiet town on the coast in Ecuador where the jungle meets the ocean. Uh, very beautiful surfing, paragliding, and um, so we're thinking about uh, working together to um, host some facilitators, including myself, and um, <clears throat> and have some like some multifaceted events uh, featuring you know different yoga instructors and surfing and plant medicine and all these different things. Okay, so lots of exciting stuff going on. I know I had said that I was going to do the Phoenix process video next, but something happened here in Ecuador that I feel like is carrying a very powerful message, and I wanted to make a short video. Um, we have just about finished that one, so it'll just be a day or two for that. But the protests in Ecuador, this is something that's really important because the indigenous just really showed the muscle and the power that the people really have. And this channel is really fundamentally about uh, conscious people empowering themselves, overcoming exploitation. You know, we're trying to create the world that we imagine. And, you know, a lot of my videos are just about how you know, even in physics, they're supporting the idea that consciousness somehow has a relationship with uh, creating reality. I'm going to make a video soon. I feel like I, I have an idea that may be able to explain synchronicities, you know, because um, the way they manifest seems to kind of violate natural law in ways that don't jive with you know the rest of the, my metaphysics and I think I may have found a potential resolution for for that conflict and, and we'll get into that but the, the the fundamental message here is about empowering people giving people the power right and so what happened here in Ecuador is that the uh, president took a loan from the IMF and let's talk about the president for a second this guy ran as a left-wing uh, candidate and as soon as he got into office he suddenly flipped script and turned into a right-wing guy and this is highly suspicious, I would say. It's kind of the equivalent of if, if Obama had taken office and suddenly started acting like George Bush, which he actually did in secret. He kept talking like Obama, but his puppet masters and the people below him continued to act like the George Bush administration, and that's something we can also talk about. Um, because I think people are very naive about how political systems work and how much they're actually being manipulated, how much misdirection there is, um, and, you know how dark and sinister the world that we're living in really is. I think a lot of people don't even really want to know. You know, a lot of even truth seekers aren't really looking for the truth. They're looking for something that they can deal with comfortably and doesn't really require them to change their life to too much of an extent and give up their comforts. And that's exactly what these indigenous people here in Ecuador had to do, and here is why. When they took the deal from the IMF, there were a bunch of conditions for getting this money. And one of them was apparently uh, Julian Assange, the WikiLeaks guy, was immediately handed over to the federales in the United States. And this is a um, pretty sure violation of all kinds of international agreements and law. Um, and very suspicious, you know, like basically they bribed this president with $4.2 billion to give up this guy that they had granted asylum. And aside from that, part of the deal was that they would uh, cut education and social welfare programs. They would uh, extend the work week. I think they were going to cut back some wages, and they got rid of the fuel subsidies. Here in Ecuador, people, you know, the poorest people make less than $20 a day. And they work harder than anyone I've ever seen in my life. I spent a few days out in the fields with these guys in Malacatos, my mom's farm, working for the same wages. Um, blisters, you know, you've been, I'd be out there for an hour, and my skin would start just bubbling. And these guys would just tear holes in rock and laugh the whole time, and, you know, so so good-natured about having to work so hard for so little. So to take even more away from them and make their lives even harder was just totally acceptable to the indigenous. So they went out and blockaded the roads. They were burning tires in the streets. There was some violence, not too much. But in a matter of days, they had cost the government more than they had borrowed in the first place, which made this whole situation just completely ridiculous. And if the world is paying attention, and this is something, please, if you guys are from other countries, you know, I want to know in the United States, Australia, all over the world, how much media coverage is this getting? Because I know they do manipulate that. They're going to censor it. Um, and, you know, I'm really curious that how much attention this has gotten globally, the situation here. Because if people really understand what happened, if they understand that they were able to through grassroots efforts, 
And just the indigenous, this wasn't, this didn't begin as like the entire population, the citizenry of Ecuador uprising. This was just basically a few of the indigenous tribes that had come together to create this disruption in order to stop this oppression from, from going through. And, you know, while we're on the subject of exploitation economies, I think it's important too that I, I've, since I've come to live here in Latin America, it has become clearer and clearer to me how much wealthy countries like the United States, uh, places in Europe, really actually depend upon the poverty in other countries to maintain their own wealth. I see gringos come here all the time and they will post on Facebook and complain about 25 cents they've had to spend extra on a taxi or you know just these their workers want an extra three dollars because it's a holiday or something and these guys are worth a million dollars and they're complaining that they've had to spend seven extra dollars on their workers or whatever. There's this like entitlement that these people should agree and be okay with being dirt poor so that we can be even wealthier, not just wealthy, but wealthier. And, you know, this is something that has got to change. We have got to change accepting that just because something makes sense to us or it's been accepted as normal doesn't mean that it's okay. So with this plant medicine and the, the meditation and all and the yoga and all of these spiritual practices that are becoming so popular, we really need to be mindful, to analyze our thoughts, to really be honest with ourselves. I think when, when there's a tendency to benefit or a position where you can, a situation where you can benefit unfairly from someone else's misfortune, but it's it's culturally accepted. We don't really think twice about it. And I think that a lot of these gringos here that are standing on the backs of these people and then looking down on them and being entitled, feeling like just because they're white or they're from a country that has more money, that they're somehow entitled to exploit these people for more money. I'm telling you also that this situation down here is definitely a clarion call to a lot of these people and I think that they may wake up and fight back in bigger numbers you know um, one of the things that bothered me about the situation is that I realized that this is over a few cents in gas you know maybe a dollar I think one of the one of the, like diesel went up by you know almost twice or something um, but what about the logging the deforestation forcing people onto uh, reserves you know I think now that we have realized that they could take a pretty marginal issue like this and block up the roads and stop an entire country dead in its tracks I mean, within a matter of hours and maintain that you know as long as they wanted I mean they were when buses came they would rob the buses and send them back like we told you don't do this you know but that way they could afford to maintain the protests so and what happened once the indigenous were able to cost more money than the government had even borrowed they actually got what they wanted and I think that's nearly unprecedented. I mean, at least in modern history, I can't think of too many examples of the people just saying no, taking action, and actually preventing the government from, you know, doing something that they didn't approve of or want or like that doesn't represent the will of the people, <clears throat> you know. And I think that this demonstration of power is something that, that we really need to absorb on a planetary scale. I just think that if people if people understand what has happened here in Ecuador and really take it to heart that you know this kind of uh, grassroots activism that actually involves getting up off your ass and doing something rather than just sending a dollar a month to some you know charitable organization that's supposed to protect the rainforest and the CEO is making five million dollars a year or whatever you know this kind of stuff doesn't work for us you know at Phoenix Flames our our plant medicine company and and um, the ceremonies that we do you know our objective is to make enough money that we can afford to give substantial amounts to very very small groups like Bosque Medicinals that are actually out there protecting the land and doing things with meaning and not just creating jobs for CEOs that are you know worth millions of dollars and I think that's something that we all should really be thinking about as well uh, speaking of activism I wanted to take a moment to talk about how dangerous real activism actually is I think that a lot of people from the United States that, that get into trying to change the world don't really realize what they're up against. They don't want to believe that the powers that be are as evil and, and, and violent and sinister as they actually are. So I work with an ayahuasquero here in Vilcabamba that is very active in trying to preserve the rainforest and protect it from um, various interests. And uh, one day when we were on the bus, he was telling me about how the way the laws were set up here in Ecuador, if uh, someone owned a piece of land and they died, the family had to pay 20% of the value of the land or the government would take it and sell it to the Chinese mines. So if you were a, a wealthy philanthropist activist and you bought this land, 
they would just come kill you. They'd find you floating in the river. Your family couldn't afford necessarily to, to put up the money or wouldn't. And then they would take the land anyways and sell it to the Chinese miners. So in order to circumvent this now, they've created a law that allows them to come in and move you off the land, relocate you, and just take it if it has minerals on it. So how do we fight this now? You know, we can no longer even risk our lives buying up the land in order to protect it from these interests. And the only way I think that we can <clears throat> put a hurting on these people in a way that matters, actually, you know, you can vote with your, your, your dollar. You can <clears throat> be more careful with what you buy. Look at a company's ethics. If you buy something on a regular basis, you know, investigate the company a little bit, see what their um, standards of ethics are. Who do they give money to? Do they donate anything? Do they have any interest in sustainability? You know, don't buy from big corporate institutions. Don't, uh, <clears throat> you know, don't buy food that causes waste. You know, all you tofu eating vegans, man. Do you have any idea how many animals are killed by that? I can't remember what the machines are called, but they basically just drag these things with these huge blades, and it just kills everything in their path. Species are going endangered in order to make your tofu. You know, stop eating soy. You know, there are things you can figure out short of what I was going to say, which is going out and blocking up the roads, stopping commerce, really taking this to the next level. And I have to be careful how far I go suggesting this kind of stuff because YouTube is not, they're censoring. Like they will not allow me to say what I really want to say. Um, <clears throat> and I think you all understand me that what has happened here in Ecuador, people might want to think about doing it all over the world if we really want to see any change effectualized. And this goes hand in hand with everything else that I talk about in this video. The more you take you know, entheogens and plant medicines under the right circumstances. Get yourself on a training protocol for mindfulness. I'm going to make videos to help, you know, facilitate, offer the tools that I have discovered in my journey um, so that we can all sort of uh, increase our metaphysical metabolism and get our conscious evolutionary journeys into overdrive. You know, we really have to do that because you really can change the world just by sitting and elevating your consciousness. I mean, that's basically been proven. Yeah, I just wanted to talk a little bit about this. Uh, and we'll get back to our regularly scheduled programming uh, in, the, in the next couple days. I'll get that Phoenix Process video out. And then, you know, I've got a couple more that are on the back burners. Um, how to be a psychedelic ninja. We're going to talk about integration on another level, you know, where you can actually take the things that you experience and learn in the psychedelic state, even on the frontiers of the psychedelic state, and integrate them into your life in such a way as to allow you to empower you to create the life that you want to live and also to influence the world in the way that you want to influence it, to, to really discover the infinite power of eternal consciousness that each one of us is a molecule of. And remember, the world will not know peace until three people can look each other in the eye simultaneously. Hit the like button, subscribe, and support us on Patreon.